One of the best aspects of Monster Hunter is the sheer variety of ways to play the game. This is all thanks to the various weapons and sheer amount of builds or sets that you can create. So I'm Dartblade with an anti electron build for the bow in Monster Hunter World Iceborne. Now the main purpose of an anti build is to create a set that is made for countering a specific monster in the game. In this episode we're going to be looking at countering Elatria, providing hunters with two builds to take on the Blaze of Black Dragon, one safe, one risky. The bow is another weapon that specialises in dealing high amounts of elemental damage to monsters making it a perfect ranged weapon to take on Elatrion. So the first build is the risky anti Elatrion bow build. This build makes use of the entire Safi Jiva set so we have to contend with health drain but in return we'll have very high elemental damage output. So for this set you'll need the Safi crested crown beta, the Safi crested chest alpha, the van braces beta, belt beta and boots beta. I'm also using a frost charm 5 and for my weapon I'm using the Kiar bow stream. If you wanted to use a different element, then you would replace the bow for one of the other elemental Kiar bows and replace the frost charm to match whatever new element you want to use. As for the augmentations, I've simply gone for elemental up augmentations and a health regen augmentation to counter the health drain of the Safi armor set. As always, the specialist tools are down to personal preference. Now, when it comes to the jewels, you've got a few to play around with here. Firstly, I've gone for tenderizer jewels to max out the weakness exploit skill. I've then gone for the mighty bow jewel, which is essential for bow builds, as it provides us the bow charge plus skill. I've then gone for evasion jewels to max out the evade window skill, vitality jewels for some health boost, a spread jewel for the power shot skill, a frost jewel to max out the ice attack skill. This of course will be replaced to match whatever element you are using. So say you're using a fire build, then this would be a blaze jewel instead of a frost jewel. Anyway, I've then gone for expert jewels for some critical eye and finally some physique jewels for some points in the constitution skill. As for the jewels in the mantles, I've simply gone for a destroy jewel for a little bit of power breaker, a four shot jewel for a point in the normal shot skill and more expert jewels. So if you've done what I've done here, you should have a build with 150 health, 100 stamina, which will be 200 health and 150 stamina. When you're on a hunt and taking all your relevant consumables, you have an attack of 306 with 70% affinity. This is with the true Dragon Vein Awakening buff active. This can be 100% so long as you're attacking monster weak points that have been tenderized through clutch claw attacks first thanks to weakness exploit. You have an elemental rating of 950 when your weapon is drawn thanks to the Dragon Vein Awakening buff. and when it comes to the coatings, you'll have close range, power, poison, and sleep coatings. As for your defense, you have a decent defense of 1081 that is strong against every element except for dragon. So when it comes to the skills, first of all, you'll have ice attack at level six. This increases the ice rating and damage of this build. If you were using a different weapon that has a different element, you would replace ice attack with whatever new element you are using. So if you were using a fire bow, like I mentioned previously, this would be fire attack instead of ice attack. Anyway, you have Evade Window at level 5, which is a wonderful defensive skill for the bow, as it increases the invulnerability period we receive when we're dodging monster attacks. Next up you have Critical Eye at level 4, which can be level 6. Critical Eye is a skill that increases the base affinity of a build. You have Health Boost at level 3, this increases our health to that potential maximum of 200. You have Blight Resistance level 3, which is kind of essential for this build, as it negates any elemental blight. Very useful when you're taking on a Latrion. Anyway, you have Critical Boost level 3. Critical Boost is a skill that increases the raw damage of our attacks when we crit a monster. Imagine an attack divided into two portions. A portion of the attack is classed as raw damage, dictated by the attack value of our weapon, and the other portion is the elemental or element portion of our attack, dictated by the elemental rating. Critical Boost only increases the damage of the raw attack portion when our attack crits a monster. Anyway, you have Weakness Exploit at level 3. Weakness Exploit is a skill that increases our affinity so long as we're attacking monster weak points. And should these weak points be tenderized through Clutch Claw attacks first, this increase to our affinity is even greater. Now, Weakness Exploit at level 3 could be considered wasted with this build, as with our weapon drawn, we do have 70% affinity. And Weakness Exploit at level 2 means that we get that extra 30% affinity so long as we're attacking monster weak points that have been tenderized through Clutch Claw attacks first. However, with the bow, it can be difficult to tenderize monster body parts at times. So having weakness exploit at level 3 means that we can still get 100% affinity even if the monster body part hasn't been tenderized through clutch claw attacks first. 
Anyway, next up is Constitution level 2. Constitution is a wonderful quality of life skill for the bow that reduces the stamina cost of various actions with the bow. Anyway, next up is Power Shots level 1. Power Shots is a skill that increases the raw attack of our Power Shots. And this is not Power Coatings, these are actually Power Shots. So moves performed with the circle or B buttons. To be honest, you can either take Power Shots or Normal Shots depending on your playstyle. I prefer Power Shots as when I'm dash dancing, I'm often using the move. Anyway, next up is Bow Charge Plus, level 1. This is an essential skill for all endgame bow builds as it allows us to charge up the bow one more time, increasing our overall damage. And finally, you have Critical Element, level 1, increasing the elemental damage of our attacks when we crit a monster. So think of it like crit boost, but for the elemental portion of our attacks. But that's about it for the normal skills. As for the skills on the mantles, first of all we have normal shots, which increases the raw attack damage of our shots performed by pressing R2 or RT. And finally you'll have part breaker level 1, which makes it slightly easier to break monster body parts. So always try to wear the impact mantle that has the part breaker skill when it comes time to breaking Alatrion's horns. Not only will this increase the likelihood of breaking those said horns, but it also means that we can potentially knock out the monster as well. Anyway, finally you'll have the set bonus, which is Safi Jeeva Seal, True Dragon Vein Awakening. This is a set bonus that provides multiple buffs and debuffs when our weapon is drawn. When our weapon is drawn, we'll get an increase of 40% base affinity. You'll also get an extra 150 elemental rating and an extra 120 ailment rating. But every time you attack with your weapon, it will drain a portion of your health, leaving a small portion of red health on your health bar. This can ultimately kill you or leave you at a disadvantage should you get hit when you have a large portion of red health on your health bar. However, should you continuously attack a monster for a set amount of time or a set amount of hits, then you'll activate a heal which will heal the damage that the true Dragon Vein Awakening dealt to your hunter. So, so long as you're not getting hit, the debuff isn't too bad. And of course this can be helped with other aspects such as the health regen augmentation. But there we have it, that is the risky anti elatrium bow build I'd recommend. But of course there are pros and cons. The biggest pro for this build is its high elemental damage, able to bring down monsters quite quickly so long as you're countering them with the right element. This build demonstrated an ice build so it would work best when Elatrion starts off in its fire form. The next pro is Evade Window being maxed out. Evade Window is a wonderful defensive skill for the bow. This is thanks to the Evade Maneuver or Dash Maneuver being part of the bow's normal rotations, meaning that you have added invulnerability when you're dashing through monster attacks. And then finally for the pros is the True Dragon Vein Awakening buffs. This enhances our DPS greatly by increasing our elemental rating and of course our affinity, which in turn benefits other skills like Critical Element. But of course there are cons. The two biggest for this build is firstly the True Dragon Bane Awakening Health Drain. Now this is a real risk reward aspect of the Safi Jeeva armor set which isn't for everyone, as if you get hit often you can leave yourself at a disadvantage if you have a large portion of red health on your health bar. And the other con for this build is unfortunately it does lack in stamina management skills. Stamina management skills are normally essential for bows, but this can be countered slightly with the likes of dash juice and more. But there we have it, that is the risky build I'd recommend for the bow for taking on Elatrion. Of course when it does come to the bow, remember to aim for the, either the head, wings or chest as these are normally the best elemental hit zones for the monster. With this in mind, this build is very effective at taking on the Blazing Black Dragon. But anyway, that brings us on to the next build, which is the safe anti elatrion bow build. This build is a little bit more of a straightforward DPS build that combines elemental DPS with some basic survival options. This is also a nice alternative if you dislike the health drain aspect of the Safi Jeeva armor set found on the Risky build, or you just want something different. So, for this build you'll need the Bracadium Helm Beta, the Silver Soul Mel Beta, Silver Soul Braces Beta, Silver Soul Coil Beta, and the Silver Soul Greaves Beta. I'm also using a Blaze Charm 5, and for my weapon I'm using the Safi Hellbow. The awakened abilities on the Safi Hellbow are simply elemental up increases. As for the augmentations, I've gone for an Infinity Increase augmentation and then an Elemental Up augmentation. Of course, much like any build out there, you can simply swap out the Safi Hellbow and Blaze Charm if you wish to use a different element. As for the Specialist Tools, again, these are down to personal preference. So when it comes to the Jaws, first of all, I've taken the Mighty Bow Jaw, of course. Afterwards, I've gone for Tenderizer Jaws for the Weakness Exploit skill, Expert Jaws for some Critical Eye, a Blaze Jaw to max out the Fire Attack skill. Of course, you would replace this again to match whatever element you were using. Resistor Jaws for the Blight Resistance skill, 
Vitality Jewels for some health boost, a Physique Jewel for some points in the Constitution skill, and some Destroyer Jewels for the Part Breaker skill. You'll then have some Spare Jewels on your Mantles, to which I've simply gone for some Attack Jewels. So if you've done what I've done here, you should have a build with 150 health, 100 stamina, which will be 200 health and 150 stamina when you're on a hunt and taking all your relevant consumables. You'll have an attack of 330 with 55% base affinity, which can be 100% so long as you're attacking monster weak points that have been tenderized through clutch claw attacks first. You'll have an elemental rating of 770 with close range and power coatings, and you'll have a decent defense of 1047 that is exceedingly strong against fire and dragon, but unfortunately weak to the other elements. So when it comes to the skills, you have Critical Eye at level 7, you have Fire Attack at level 6. Of course, as always, replace this to match whatever element you are using. So if you were using a Water Weapon, it would be Water Attack level 6. Anyway, you have Slinger Capacity level 5, a byproduct of the armor we're wearing, but allows us to carry more Slinger ammunition into a hunt. You have Health Boost level 3, Blight Resistance level 3, Critical Boost level 3, Weakness Exploit level 3, Windproof level 1. Windproof is a byproduct of the armor we're wearing. It helps resist minor wind effects, but it won't be that useful against Elatrion. You have Part Breaker level 1, which can be level 3 when we're wearing our mantles, making it even easier to break Elatrion's horns. So always remember to make use of the Impact Mantle when it comes time to breaking Elatrion's horns. You have Constitution level 1, it would have been nice to get this higher in all honesty, but it's not too big of an issue given Elatrion's attack patterns. You have Bow Charge plus level 1. And finally, when you're wearing the Temporal Mantle, you have Attack Boost level 1. Attack Boost increases the raw damage of a build. Anyway, finally, for the set bonus, you have the Silver Raphalos Essence. First of all, for wearing two pieces of the armor, you'll have the Slinger Ammo Secret, allowing us to get the Slinger Capacity skill from level 3 to a maximum of level 5. And finally, you'll have True Critical Element for wearing four pieces of the armor. True Critical Element greatly increases the elemental damage of our attacks when we crit a monster which means as long as we are critting a monster, we're going to be doing a lot of elemental damage. But there we have it, that is the safer anti-Elatrion bow build I'd recommend. Whilst it is focused more on DPS than a normal survival build or utility build that I'd recommend, it nonetheless has more survival than the risky anti-Elatrion bow build. But it does have pros and cons. Its biggest pro is its high elemental damage. This is thanks to making use of true critical element with high affinity, meaning that it can almost keep up with the risky build in terms of DPS. On top of that, it's quite an easy build to craft and can even be created from pre Safi Jiva equipment. And then finally, when it comes to the pros, this is a build that pretty much can be used with any element quite effectively. It doesn't require Kiar weapons or anything like that to be effective. But unfortunately, there are cons. The biggest con for this build is again much like the risky build, it does lack stamina management skills. And whilst dash juice does alleviate this issue slightly, it's going to be something you may notice, especially if you were to use this build on other hunts. But like I said, given Elatrion's attack patterns, it's not too big of an issue during the Elatrion hunts. And the final con is unfortunately to maintain that 100% affinity, you have to tenderize monster body parts with clutch claw attacks quite often, which can be an issue if you are going into the Elatrion hunt solo, but if you're playing with others, especially other hunters who use heavier weapons like the hammer, charge blade and greatsword and so on, then it's not going to be as big a con. But regardless, like I said, if you're not a fan of the risky build and you don't like the Safi Jiva armor as well as its health drain, then this is a build I'd recommend. It still has strong DPS output, is easier to craft, and gives you a little bit more extra security. So there we have it. Those are the builds I'd recommend for taking on Elatrion with the bow. Now, of course, as you farm more and more, you'll get Elatrion gear and weaponry, which will allow you to take on the hunt more easily as they have incredibly high elemental ratings and defenses. But until then, these builds should work just fine. So until next time, I've been Darblade, bringing you an anti-Elatrion build for the bow in Monster Hunter Wood Iceborne. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Subscribe and like for more.